What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about a proper, quintessential British afternoon tea. I think I speak for a lot of Americans when I say I know nothing about tea. I don't get it. I don't drink it. I barely understand the concept of it. I almost thought that the British association that us Americans have with tea, we associate Britain with tea. I didn't know if that was an exaggeration, if it's just truthful. The more that I've kind of learned about British culture, it seems to actually be a thing. Uh, quite a quite a fan favorite among a lot of Brits. So I thought it'd be interesting to actually do my due diligence and <laughs> suffer through this quintessential, like, how you are actually supposed to do a proper British afternoon tea. I think this is going to explain how you make it, the reasoning behind it. You know, these things might seem obvious to to most people, but believe me, they are not obvious to me. Um, I don't know if this, this almost looks kind of fancy. Like, I, I imagine most British people probably throw the tea together, like, and it's not so formal. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it's like a meditative kind of experience, you know? I drink coffee on a daily basis, so I, I kind of liken it to that sort of experience, where it's just a, a routine, a nice routine. But this is something that is just standard quintessential, quintessential Britishness. Tea. Making tea. Having tea. And uh, I want to know more about it. I want to learn. So, this video looked quite entertaining. Let's take a look. This is all about the art of afternoon tea and what it means to us British, as well as what to expect on the menu and a few hints and tips on how to get the very best out of this national obsession. Oh wow, this is perfect. National obsession. Yes, okay, I don't feel so bad anymore for like, Assuming a lot of British people drink tea. That's not uh, a stereotype. It seems to be somewhat true. Tea was discovered, so the story goes, back in China around 2737 BC. The Emperor Shennong was resting in the shade of the Camellia sinensis tree when a leaf fluttered down into his cup of hot water. Oh. This small leaf went on to conquer the world. <laughs> it is kind of beautiful, the simplicity of tea putting something in water, creating this thing, this amazing thing. That's right, it does have like deep meaning and roots in China. I think I was somewhat aware of that. Afternoon tea is usually taken around four or five o'clock and here are a few essential components. Four or five o'clock? When are you having dinner? At, is that the afternoon, four or five? Just barely. I'm not gonna nitpick. <laughs> I'm not gonna nitpick every little thing here. <laughs> that one got me though. It's like four o'clock. Afternoon to me would be like two. I'd do a two o'clock tea. The first being, of course, tea. Although many people use tea bags, it's always best to use fresh brewed loose leaf, usually an Indian or Chinese blend, to get the best flavor. What? There's a Oh, okay. We are, we are, suddenly we jumped into it, and, uh, <laughs> I have never seen tea made except for a tea bag. And the only flavor I even know of is Earl Grey. And, uh, I'm told there are other flavors, apparently. A vast range of tea from single estate to blends. But here are some of the many kinds served at Fortnum's where we are today. Oh. White peony king tea. Nanping yellow bud tea. Oh my. Finest gukara tea. Royal blend tea. Oh my. Then the cakes, of course. C cakes? Okay, what? I'm sure that tea is enjoyed with like, oh, what do you call it? Like a biscuit? <laughs> a cookie? Some bread or toast or something from what little I know? This seems like extreme to have a whole platter and cake but what do I know? Maybe this is like the ideal scenario? A Bakewell tart perhaps, or a lemon drizzle cake. Oh wow. Scones are also a must. Light, golden and fluffy, slathered with clotted cream and jam. Whoa. And sandwiches, 
the crust cut off, filled with smoked salmon, chicken, cucumber, ham and cheese, or egg mayonnaise. What? I mean, okay, this is, there's no way every British person is throwing together this whole feast every time they have afternoon tea. These are just like options to ch pick from, maybe, I'm guessing. <laughs> Laying the table. Right, right. I mean, it's an experience, right? The the afternoon tea. It's got to be an experience. Got to present the table correctly, I guess. One of the things that defines this tradition and makes it so celebrated is its ascetic appeal. Mm. A chance to bring out the good china. Oh, yeah. The I, I mean, I'll be honest. They do make it look quite nice. The first teapot can be traced back to the 16th century in Yixing, China, made of porous, unglazed clay, but the art of the teapot is as rich as it is varied. Cool. And here's Dr. Andrea Tanner, the archivist at Fortnum & Mason, to give you a bit more background. Okay. Wow, look at that teapot. Yeah, teapots can be pretty cool, almost like a little slice of history. Whether you drank tea or whether you didn't, the chief bridesmaid had to give you a tea set as a wedding present. Mm. They're brought out now from time to time and used. And it's fun if you have something beautiful. Isn't it lovely to use it? Yeah, if you yeah. haven't got something beautiful, it doesn't matter. I like that. I, I, I like that. You start with the accoutrements, I suppose, a milk jug and a sugar bowl. If you have loose tea. Milk. Milk in the tea? Really? Milk in the tea. Is that normal? <laughs> Does that make it better? I put milk in my coffee. Cream. Hmm. The milk has me thrown a little bit. A tea strainer and a holder for the tea strainer. A china cup, saucer and tea plate. Knives and forks, perhaps a cake fork. Preserve spoons if you happen to have them, otherwise teaspoons work perfectly well. Ah. With the table laid, the ceremony can begin. Oh my goodness. Oh, preparing the tea. Oh gosh. And how to make the perfect cup of tea? Well, the tea should brew in the pot for around three to five minutes for black tea, which is the most popular form of tea, and pour through a strainer into the cup to ensure no loose leaves are in the final drink. Oh, wow. I've never, oh, wow. So when you make it sort of the traditional way in the teapot, not it, not directly in your mug with your dirty old tea bag. Uh, the leaves, the tea leaves are like floating freely around. So you need a strainer. Of course, there's a science to this. Add milk and sugar as you wish, but it's best to avoid milk with green teas. Milk. What does that do? I mean, tea is mostly water. I think it's just the idea of mixing water and milk. That kind of disturbs me. But coffee is made of water, and I put milk in my coffee. Huh, I'm having a bit of a crisis here. I never quite thought of it that way. <laughs> so as for the sugar, pour it all in. <laughs> That's a fancy fork. <laughs> Buddhist monks helped spread tea around Asia while the British brought it to India. Now this part of tea's history is closely entwined with empire, colonialism, greed, injustice, and war. Oh. The East India Company, one of the first major tea traders, both rapacious and entirely unregulated. It began really just in the homes of the aristocracy. Yeah, I mean, a large part of American history is based on tea. Um, taxes on tea, Boston Tea Party. That's, that's all stuff that we're actually taught in American education. You had to be rich in order to enjoy tea in the 18th to 19th centuries. Uh. It was a huge employer across what became the British Empire. All tea, when Fortnum & Mason opened, was grown in China. Wow, who knew that tea had such a huge influence? on like the expansion of the British Empire and trade. By 1837, it was grown in India from the late 19th century in Africa. It gave employment. It has to be said, a lot of that employment was indentured labor. And it's mm. something that tea growers, tea drinkers, tea blenders, tea sellers have to acknowledge. And it's something that we have to deal with 
and we have to deal with it in a very serious way. Mm. But despite its murky history, tea remains Britain's most popular drink, with an estimated 100 million cups being drunk every single day. 100 million cups a day? Just in Britain? Hold on, we're doing some math. Days in a year, 365. We're doing 100 million divided by 365. I wanna know how many cups of day, how many cups of tea per day? Is this a million? Let's see, 100,000, well, six zeros, right? No, I did too many. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh boy, I did a hundred million. Wait a minute, it was a hundred million, wasn't it? Hold on. With an estimated 100 million cups being- A hundred million, Never mind. I was correct. All right, a hundred million cups divided by 365 days. Whoopsie. I had it, I, I had it staring in front of me and I just won't read it. 273,000 cups per day. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Being drunk every single day. Serving the food. Okay, right. So this is a whole part of tea time that I've never even truly considered. Um, it's not just about the tea. It's about the experience. And that experience includes tasty foods, apparently. When you go to a grand hotel or restaurant, presentation is every bit as essential as the actual tea from mm. beautiful cake stands to pretty napkins and tablecloths. Okay. I think our ancestors would have been horrified at that amount of indulgence. In Victorian and Edwardian times, you would have had something called seed cake, which had caraway seeds in it. You might have had a slice of Madeira, so rather a plain dry cake, some fruit cake. The cake with your tea. Man, this is so fancy. I think there's got to be another video I'll have to watch on like, <laughs> like standard, regular British tea time, like in a British household. This is like the fanciest tea time I've ever seen. Great variety of tiny little cakes, which are really influenced by French and Austro-Hungarian bakers, don't really come in until the 1960s and 1970s. You might have been a little bit disappointed with what you would have had in Edwardian times. Oh, goodness. A debate still rages in England as to which order you should put the jam and clotted cream on your scone. And remember, scone like gone, not scone like home. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, I say scone. Uh-oh. Anyway, in Cornwall, they believe the jam should go on first, followed by the clotted cream. What? You're telling me there's a... There's an ongoing debate on the order, whether you should put jam on first or cream? Wow. British uh, tea time problems, who knew? In Devon, it's the other way around. As to my view, well, I'll keep that very much to myself because I really do not want to get in the middle of a scone war. Yeah, <laughs> don't, wouldn't want that. Etiquette and tradition. Oh, some etiquette, right. This is quite uh, the fancy occasion after all. There's a lot of chat about tea etiquette, but really it's all about observing basic good manners and nothing more. When the okay. tradition started, it was a rather more formal affair. Sometime in the mid 19th century, Anna, Duchess of Bedford, a lifelong friend of Queen Victoria, felt a sinking feeling in the mid afternoon. So asked a servant to bring a tea along with bread and butter and a slice of cake. She wow. then started to invite her friends and a British institution was born. Wow all just based upon one person's craving for tea and cake in the middle of the day, hundreds of years ago. Bam, changed the course of humanity. In a tea room in Edwardian times, it would have been quite a different affair. The ladies would have worn tea gowns. These were dresses that were specifically created for having afternoon tea. And they what? were tea colored. I don't know if that's because they were complimenting the tea or they were worried if they spilt any. Nowadays, we don't wear specific clothes. Uh, clothing dedicated to the 20 minutes you're gonna be spending. Actually, I don't know for sure how long. I'm sure back in the day, they, they had nothing to do. So uh, they couldn't watch YouTube videos about tea. So they're just sitting around at tea time for hours. 
own dedicated outfits to tea time. Hmm. One tradition which still stands, however, is the hostess pouring the tea. Mm. And be sure to take your time. Afternoon tea is about pleasure and stepping away from the daily grind. Right. Taking a break from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. Yes. An escape, a moment of peace, a deeply civilized experience. Okay, I like that. That's a good sentiment. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I feel like I've just been through something. <laughs> uh, this was by Conde Nast Traveler. I like that. I might be saying your name wrong, but I liked it. This accent mark above the E. Conde? Condi? Nast Traveler? Good video. Uh, <laughs> very good. Oh, this comment says, I'm eager to have afternoon tea after watching this. Uh, I realize I have no time for it. I'm but a mere peasant. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. This was good. Um, after watching this, I think it's fair to say that I can assume this is not indicative of the common man's tea time in Britain, but this was more of a historical look at tea time. But, you know, it also had some, some good education for me on how to make the tea properly, what to eat it with, the jam cream debate. Uh, among other things. So I enjoyed this nonetheless. I learned a lot about tea. And uh, there, there are a few things I still wonder, you know? Like, well, they did tell me how many cups of tea, 100 million, uh, in a year. Wait, was that in a year or a day? Hold the phone. Well, I'll keep that very much to myself. 100 million cups being drunk every single day. Oh my gosh. I divided. I thought that was a year. I thought that was a year. It was in a day. An estimated one. Despite its murky history, tea remains Britain's most popular drink, with an estimated 100 million cups being drunk every single day. Britain alone? I assumed it was 100 million cups a year. 100 million cups a day? Just in Britain? What? What's the population of Britain? Population of Britain. 67 million. Okay, that's like 1.5 cups per person. That makes more sense. Okay, but per day. My goodness, my my I can't have my mind blown any more than this. That's that's it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this reaction, feel free to give it a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain, British culture, stuff in Britain that I've never seen or heard before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.